Greetings, I'm Douglas Wicks, a program director at RPE, here to share uh, some information about an interest area we have, and that's looking at CO2 mineralization to enhance the extraction of critical and commodity minerals. Um, so what are we really trying to do? We're trying to exploit the mineralization of CO2 to facilitate the liberation of critical and commodity minerals that I'll discuss. And really, this comes from the fact that the U.S. has vast deposits of mafic and ultramafic uh, rocks that have been investigated for the sequestration of CO2. Uh, you can get additional information by seeing the open webinar uh, put out by Dr. Joseph King. Um, of note for what I'm, on, I'm interested in, these deposits also contain minerals critical to our economy at concentrations below current commercial interest. For example, they contain nickel, cobalt, and chrome. So the question to be answered is, can the mineralization of CO2 be used as a tool to efficiently liberate these economically important minerals while at the same time sequestering carbon? Uh, I want everybody to keep in mind that mineralization is a natural process. Um, it, it's the key to the erosion processes that make mountains into molehills. So nature's way is through a combination of wind, rain, ice, trees, thawing events, biology and seismic events that contribute to the process of reducing the mountains. Many of the ore bodies we mine right now are a, are a result of this process, but keep in mind it takes time literally eons to take place. So again, CO2 mineralization is a natural refining process. You know, on a geological time scale, hydration and mineralization of CO2 uh, concentrates nickel in laterite. Uh, this is a key mineral we mine where most of our nickel comes from. As the reaction progresses, magnesium carbonate and silica leach away from the surface, leaving enriched levels of desirable elements. So in this way, as shown on the, uh, the graphic on the left, uh, pariodite, an ultramafic rock, is slowly converted into a different variety of different uh, items that contain increased concentrations uh, of the different elements. Um, carbon capture through mineralization has been discussed, and as I indicated, uh, Joe King will be talking more about this, but this graphic gives a pretty good idea of the process that's been looked at or that's being looked at for surface mineralization of CO2. We take an ultramafic rock, olivine in um, this instance, we crush it, we grind it, um, react the ground material with CO2, and this results in the formation of a large amount of magnesium carbonate uh, plus CO2 plus silica, while at the same time um, reacting in about a third of a ton of CO2 per ton of mineral. Um, these authors uh, look at the idea that the CO2 contains um, mag or results in, excuse me, that the, the process results in magnesite or an amorphous silica being formed that do have uses in concrete uh, paper and polymer applications. But we should keep in mind that these raw magnesite and amorphous silica products have very low economic value and, and would not be a driver for the process of doing this complex uh, chemistry. So the other thing we have to keep in mind is what are the challenges that, that are faced here? So when we begin to look at CO2 mineralization at a particle scale, so when we grind this material down to a small um, particle size and to increase the surface area, we have a wide variety of chemical reactions taking place uh, as the uh, ore is transformed into different minerals, requiring the diffusion of CO2 into the, into the particles, reactions taking place in the solid and liquid phases, uh, as well as precipitation of uh, the reaction products. 
uh, to address the science of how do we take this reaction to take place when we're trying to not only mineralize CO2, but withdraw uh, these key elements, uh, we need a range of disciplines to address this. You know, there's chemistry problems to be solved, surface science, surface science issues, thermodynamics, mineralogy, geology, plus a plethora of engineering skills would have to be brought to bear to solve this problem. Where could we see this taking place in the United States? Um, we're going to target some ore bodies using nickel as an example of the metal we want to uh, return, uh, retrieve, um, and looking at mafic and ultramafic deposits as mapped out by the USGS at right. Um, there are four key areas within the United States that have relatively high nickel concentrations in the range of uh, 0 0.5 to a quarter weight percent uh, of nickel uh, that are readily available at the surface. Um, when we go forward and think about this, we have to think about the logistical considerations of how we, we um, do this mining. Um, the CO2 should be available from carbon capture and sequestration processes or direct air capture or maybe other sources. Um, we have to ask, will we be doing this processing at the mine site um, when we go forward? Uh, and then there's the issue of co-products. Uh, as I indicated earlier, magnesite and silica are going to be produced in large volumes. Will we be disposing these uh, of these on site or will we beneficiate them uh, into a value-added product? So why call out nickel? Uh, you know, I brought nickel into this. Um, and if you take a look at nickel, it's a high demand growth. As the chart on right shows, uh, we'll be doubling the amount of nickel that's required for our economy um, in the next 20 years. So that's a very large growth. Um, it's critical to energy. Batteries, alloys, and fuel cells all rely on large amounts of nickel uh, to be used um, to go forward with. Uh, I like the quote ca that came out recently from Elon Musk as he talked in his battery day. Uh, he quite emphatically said, please mine more nickel uh, because nickel is key to the batteries and the electrification of our transportation system. Uh, another driver for nickel mining innovation uh, is really the purity of the materials we're mining. So in, in the U.S., we have limited availability. Uh, we mine, uh, we do mine some nickel-bearing ores. Uh, this would only meet about 10% of our current domestic demand. And, and by the way, we have no domestic smelting of the ores back into uh, metallic nickel. And on the global situation is where the real challenge is coming. There is a rapid decrease in ore grades. The chart in the right that comes from CNRS shows the concentration uh, of nickel in the ores mined in several key locations. Uh, New Caledonia, French province uh, in the Pacific, they started out mining uh, more than 100 years ago, almost 150 years ago, and the mine gave 12% nickel. Uh, as they've continued to use this mine, it's now dropped down to just over 2%. Uh, similarly, mines in Canada initially had very high concentrations, uh, upwards of 8%. And over time, those high um, value or uh, deposits have been mined and depleted with now the, the, the concentrations being below 2%. This, the same is seen in Australia. And by the way, this is happening to all of our industrial minerals. We have mined the easy ones. And as we go forward, th there's limited new deposits of nickel at greater than 1% that are under development. This at the same time, we have doubling of demand in the next few years. So challenges that need to be addressed. There's a lot of, uh, of innovation required in this field. Uh, if you look at the mining process simplistically shown on the left, uh, we have um, 
blasting and removal of the ore from the ground. We crush it down to uh, a manageable size. It then goes through a size reduction process or grinding or, uh, to get down to a size by which we can do reactions and extractions on this. And we generate a lot of waste um, within the process, as well as our target product. So where do we need in innovations? On the energy side, um, a lot of energy goes in, into the mining process. Uh, Comminution at large scale really needs to be improved and will be the topic of a separate webinar. Uh, process needs uh, for dilute targets. So the whole process is, is very energy intensive as is the logistics and materials handling as we move around these large amounts of ore. Um, there's going to be innovations required in the process flow. So for this specific area, the mechanism and kinetics of CO2 reaction um, really need to be defined and improved. Um, we also need to look at what concentration of CO2 is needed. Can we take direct flue gas off of a power generator and mineralize the CO2 there, or do we need to go to high concentrations? Uh, there's also a major challenge of surface passivation uh, during the reactions, where the reaction plot products, the silica and carbonates we form, block the surface, uh, preventing further mineralization and extraction of the target uh, element. And then major challenges in separation of the desired elements uh, at large scale. Uh, anytime you talk about mining, you also have to talk about the environment, because we are doing this outside. Um, we have to look at legacy tailings and mine runoffs, not only from our process, but perhaps also uh, as a source uh, for reactants in these systems from old mines. So what are we interested in? Um, we are interested in a wide variety of, of chemistries to do this. It can be thermal, thermo, electro, bio, mechanochemical processes that concurrently mineralize enough CO2 while liberating this target mineral to be considered carbon negative. We want to look at this process and say, can we use mining as a way to eliminate carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? Um, we are interested in the high value minerals and potentially CO2 reactive ores. This includes, as I mentioned earlier, nickel, chromium, and cobalt, but also alumina, phosphates, and other uh, very important minerals that we mine that could potentially be CO2 sinks. Um, we are also interested in concepts that would use all of the co products of the mined and processed ore for beneficial uses. So can we get up ideas that not only recover these important uh, minerals, but also make use of the carbonates and silicates uh, and other co-products that are result from the processes? Um, can we look at integration of different CO2 sources and concentrations? Again, looking at is it direct air capture or is it flue gas um, where we get our CO2 from? Uh, and, and then lastly, we're interested in in-situ extraction processes uh, to be implemented together with geothermal energy uh, processes or mineralization processes such as Dr. King discussed. What we're not interested in, um, ideas that propose uh, technology that's already in practice. Um, onshoring of technology practiced outside of the United States, um, ideas that cannot be scaled to continuously process large volumes. Uh, mining is a big, big industry with many, many tons of materials to be processed. Um, concepts that do not improve the economics of mining are not interested. To become sustainable, the process has to make money. Um, we're also not interested in solutions that do not address the environmental concerns of mining. Uh, ones that um, lead to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions or toxic releases to air, water, and land um, will not be, should not be proposed. So 
keep in mind there are related activities at RPE. Uh, please visit our website for the for um, program idea information. Uh, coming to the the open web page, we have the CO2 mineralization um, topic being discussed. We have decarbonization of iron and steel making being of interest. And again, we have the energy efficient uh, routes to communition uh, of ores going forward. Uh, also available on the RPE Energy Briefs webpage, uh, we have webinars on the flexible carbon capture from energy production, as well as direct air and ocean capture of CO2 that will be of interest. Thank you for your attention. Be safe. <music>